Coming up on Techzilla, Black Friday is upon us and we've got some deals for you. Plus, we get astronomical sidewalk stargazing, telescope making, comet homes, and more. And finally, GPS systems that won't break the bank. In this week's episode, which is brought to you by GoDaddy.com, TradePub.com, Netflix, and the 5,000-year-old Bristlecone Pines in Great Basin National Park. Hello and welcome to Techzilla. I'm Jessica Corbin. And I'm Patrick Norton. It is it's Black Friday. Happy Black Friday to you all. <laughs> Big bargains day, traditionally, it's the day after Thanksgiving, traditionally yep. one of the biggest, if not the biggest, shopping day of the year. Yes. And there's a lot of sales built around Black Friday. Right. Some of them are good, some of them are kind of... Yeah. 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 You should shop around, actually. We want to the, the, the ones that's weird, a lot of them is like these super low bargains designed to get you in the store. They're called Lost Leaders. See, I, and it was, when I was reading, you know, the script for today's right. show, I was like, oh, what is this, Patrick? What is this? <laughs> Lost Leaders? Lost Leaders. Lost Leaders. Well, Lost Leaders, classic Lost Leader, like Best Buy or Walmart, you know, yeah. they always have really cheap CDs and DVDs. Yeah. They take a hit on the profits there because they figure you're going to walk in, you're going to go for CDs, you're going to like an economy size thing of toilet paper uh -huh. and like maybe a CD player and a couple of bicycles for the kids you know they, they right. figure you're going to pick up by the time you get there's a reason they put it's that a section hook is what it is it's that little bait to get you in and you yeah. know what it always works because anytime i go into you know one of these big mega stores just gonna I do, i'm DVD. just going to get one thing one thing one thing it's going to be totally cheap i walk out spending 150 bucks your 200 trunk bucks. is full totally and you've got because like, everything is such a good deal by the time you get in there and then you're like and then i can buy you know all the way through you know january you've got two years supply of peanut brittle i know because <laughs> it was such a good deal when you buy in bulk yeah anyway go on. costco's dangerous that way this black friday gps systems like car gps systems yeah. are going to be one of the big ones last year they broke sort of the 200 dollars price range this year there's going to be a lot of models so excited just under a hundred bucks now we're going to talk about those in a couple minutes yeah Right now, though, we want to get a, just kind of get you a reminder to price things before you get caught up in the credit card melting frenzy. A sale price here might be the regular price there, or it might be the regular price there plus a bunch of money. Right. So definitely, definitely shop around. And think about getting some coupons. If you're ordering online, there's a bunch of websites. We'll put a bunch more on the web, but dealcatcher.com, dailydeals.com, dealtaker.com. There's a whole bunch of them out there, and they're like, whenever you're ordering and you see that, like, enter product code here for discount, yes. you can basically search these websites for discounts for and a particular I never, website. And I see that all the time, and I still have yet to make that a consistent part of my online shopping, but I should. Like, why not? Well, what if you could basically, like, buy an extra pair of shoes every yeah. five pair of shoes you bought? I think it's a great idea, Patrick. Search around. <laughs> all right. So, one of the things we're talking about, like, just as I'm going to go, dropping in price this year, is uh, car navigation systems. Yeah. There's a lot of options under $200. Uh, we found, and even some under $100. Now, we found this is a place called GPS Lodge. It's a website, a blog dedicated GPS systems. And we're talking about brand names here, not like some weird thing you've never heard of or like the Polaroid rebranding. But it's really interesting. GPS Lodge, they put up a couple weeks ago. So I actually was going to buy, like, we're, we're doing a time travel exercise. Right. I was going to buy one last <laughs> weekend. Right. But I found GPS Lodge and I decided to wait until Black Friday. Because whoever the purple, the people are that run GPS lots, they got lists of all of the GPS units that are going to be on sale they at all know. the different like Radio Shack and Best Buy and, and all the big box stores, and they published them on their website. So you could basically find out what was going to drop in price for Black Friday. This is awesome. Well, yeah, like the one I was going to buy for two hundred dollars is now going to be one hundred and fifty dollars. Like Tom Tom ones are going to be one hundred and thirty to one hundred and fifty. Mio C220 for $99. Garmin Nuvies are going to drop down to 170 to 270 bucks. These are great, great deals. Yeah. I like saving money. Uh, well, who doesn't like saving money? And I'm totally, <laughs> I'm totally stoked now because now it's dropped in a range. I will be able to actually purchase these things as gifts yes. for people. It's almost dropped into that, not a luxury item for me, but maybe I can purchase this that as a That friend that calls you up like, dude, are you online? Um, go to Google Maps. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have that friend? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So before Black Friday, one of the only brands I could find under 200 bucks was a Mio C230. That's uh -huh. one I've spent a bunch of time with the Mio C220. Really liked it, um, but most of the auto GPSs are usually in like 350 to 750 dollar range. Yeah. So the expensive ones, they get you a big screen, which I, I don't really agree with the big screens because you it's have distracting. The, exactly, because yeah. if you're driving and you're looking, at, GPS is not radar; it's a map. And if you're staring at the map on the highway, you're going to run into somebody. That's why it's so important for GPS to be audible. Yes, you just need audible and loud. Loud. 
loud. Yeah, the more expensive ones, they add an MP3 players. They'll do like Bluetooth adapters for your cell imaging. phone. Well, 3D imaging actually has become really common even at the $100 level. Ah. So like 100, 200 bucks, you're gonna get some form of 3D imaging. A lot of the differences, like like the Mio has 3D imaging, um, Navigon, the I think the 2100 I hear is gonna be on sale for around 100 bucks. TomTom Tom One's gonna be 100 to 200 bucks. Those all have like some form of 3D imaging. Any of these can you take with you? Are they portable? They're all portable. They're all, all basically designed to either run off. Be in your dash. Most of them actually have uh, a, like either onboard batteries or take a couple double A's or something. Uh -huh. Um, and they plug into a lighter socket, mm -hmm. and they almost all come with some adapter to stick to the windshield. And you can basically yank them out of one car and put them in the next. Great. It's awesome. Great. It's really, really easy. C230, part of the reason it caught my eye, smaller than the C220, they mm -hmm. cut like a half inch off of it. Um, text to speech functions, so it mentions street names, which mm -hmm. is something that's like, Mio's pretty famous for kind of trying to take really high end features and push them down in the low end. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying, take a right turn in 500 yards with that computer voice. My GPS voice, system does not sound like that, but go on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of saying, turn right in 500 yards, it says, turn that's right on Maple Street. Right? Uh -huh. So they start actually, that's what they, when they start talking about text to speech, that's what they're talking about. Got it. Uh, decent set of points of interest, although less than the C220, because it no longer has this big expandable memory. So personally, I, like, I really actually like Garmin's interfaces the best in terms of the interaction with Me the too. device itself. But one thing I got to say, you know, if you're buying high-end, the Garmin newbies are good. No matter what you buy, don't try to sort of program your addresses or change screens and stuff while you're running. Let your co-pilot do it. Let your co-dog do it. See, I'm such a multitasker, so I would be so guilty of doing that. So uh, you're the one who's like eating your McMuffin and combing your eyelashes okay, out. Okay, I don't eat newspaper. McMuffins and I don't comb my eyelashes. I comb my eyebrows and I eat um, smoothies while you're driving. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but thanks for the heads up on that, and you are a GPS master. Thank you. I just feel so much more informed. I feel so less safe in traffic in San Francisco. Don't drive with me then. <laughs> All right. So coming up, urban astronomy, comets, and telescope building. But first. Listen up. We love shopping online, but there is one place where you can really get snagged, the shipping costs. Some vendors have a very low price, but add hefty packaging or shipping fees above and beyond the cost of shipping the item to your home, especially large or heavy items such as HDTVs, computer cases, and home theater equipment can just be all kinds of expensive to ship period. When you're comparing prices, make sure you think about the shipping costs. It might eat up any savings over buying locally, or if the reseller includes it cheap or free, make it even more of a bargain. And speaking of bargains, people, get free tech, journal, and tech magazine subscriptions from tradepub.com. They have some really popular and cool magazines available like Dr. Dobbs Journal, eWeek, Software Magazine, Information Week and Internet Telephony, plus tons more. Sign up to get any or all of them completely free at techzilla.tradepub.com. Our shining star producer, Neha Tuari, met up with one of the local urban astronomers, aka sidewalk astronomer, to discuss the latest streak in the sky, Comet Holmes, and how to build a telescope from scratch. Whether it's the rings of Jupiter or the belt of Orion, the study of space has always been intriguing. In 1968, a group of amateur stargazers took it to the streets and created the telescope-making sidewalk astronomers. With the latest and brightest comet homes flying above us now, we found out how to locate the comet and build a telescope. So I'm here with, uh, with Ken from the Sidewalk Astronomers. Now I know with Comet Holmes that you actually don't need a telescope. You can see it just on your own. All you have to do is look in the northeast, right up here, and you make kind of like a W on its side. Uh, okay. Is oh, that... you got it. Okay. Here, okay. stand like this. Right. Turn like this. Okay. So this is Cassiopeia, the queen of the Nile. Right, three points. Right about like that. Okay. Ah. And then you come down two fists. Common Holmes is going to be right here. Ah. All right. And then if you come back over this way, yeah. you can see the Andromeda galaxy. Wow. It's our closest galaxy to us. You compare these two, Comet Holmes appears bigger than uh, the Andromeda galaxy. And now why is it that we could see uh, Comet Holmes with our naked eye? Why don't we need a telescope? Uh, because it increased in brightness by almost a million times. And there's no, we couldn't see a cometary tail either. It just got bigger. Okay, so it's getting a little chilly out there with the telescope, I admit. So now we're inside the cafe drinking some warm hot chocolate. And I want to know more about uh, the class that you teach. 
The class that we teach at the Randall Museum is telescope making. This is the base, this is called the tailgate. Okay. And what happens is the mirror, which is a piece of glass, fits right up against here, and it's adjusted by these screws, these collimation screws. Now these are all things that we could go out and buy ourselves, right? There's nothing special here. You don't even have to here. buy it. You, oh. this, this is like a piece of plywood. Okay. This is uh, cardboard from a regular cereal box. Okay. These, well, you might have to get something like these. These are little formica things, but two nails and that's it. Now you have a whole bag of tricks, it seems like. A whole bag of tricks. So when you're at home and you hang up your clothes, yeah. this is what it is. It's a dowel. So this is for the secondary mirror. What you do is you place the mirror on here. Okay, so we have this part of the dowel, we have the mirror, and what else do you need? So you take this uh, piece of leather and you cut it up into three little pieces. Okay. You stick it with glue on three points here. Then you place the second, this is called a secondary mirror. It's an optical flat mirror onto the secondary holder. And then you take uh, shims that you put in here and that's where the light is directed to, to make a focuser. So you glue these together, and then this goes into the optical tube, and it's the tube that you use to pour cement into. Okay. And then I showed you the eyepiece that's made from a binocular that you went to a pawn shop or right. you got an old pair, and you just stick it in. This is a waste tube from a drain. Oh. So that just fits, you like that? Right yeah, in here. Right in there. And this is how you focus. Wow. Isn't that cool? So would I be able to use this telescope to see something like, uh, you know, a comet, maybe not Comet Holmes, but another You can one? see Comet Holmes, you can see the rings of Saturn, you can see the four Galilean moons wow. of Jupiter. What would you say is the average cost of building something like this? 300 bucks total. Wow, that is a lot cheaper than the thousands of dollars that most people spend right. on, you know, commercial telescopes. What was the scientific or the you know, astronomers community response to Comet Holmes? Well, the thing that's so neat about this is the comet looks like kind of the end of a dirty Q-tip. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of like this little fuzzy thing, and but it started out at magnitude 17.7. You can't see that, thanks to that. And then it went to uh, 2 point bag 2.2. And then from then, it just got bigger and brighter. It's incredible. It's something that we probably will never ever see in our lifetimes or possibly anyone ever again to see something quite like it. Do we know how long we have to catch it? Well, it's a periodic comb. So I would say right now, the way it's dimming so rapidly, maybe another week. All right, well, thank you so much for talking with us and, and showing me how to kind of build a telescope. And well, the there's a lot more to yeah. it, but you get the idea. Yes. All right, thank you. So just to wrap it up, if you have a passion for stargazing, check out Comet Homes, flying by a sky near you. We need to build the telescope. Fine. You can build it. I will watch. How about you? You talk about reading star maps or like star charts? I'll yes. the telescope. Dope. I mean, I love no? space activity. No, I said dope. Okay. Yes. That means yes. The kids I say dope, no. meaning yes. I was like, like no, like I'm it. not that old. No. <laughs> but one thing that That's I did witness recently was being on top of Mauna Kea. I was at the Canada France telescope during the lunar eclipse and just being out on the edge. I saw the Milky Way like I'd never seen it before. So the space activity, man, it, it, it has a, a special place in my heart. It gives you a bigger perspective on stuff. I love it so much. You're like Cosmos Girl right I now. I just love it. It's awesome. I love it. Either way, you are going to make, the, I think you should make the telescope. I think you can do it. Maybe we should like have a telescope off. Telescope team? Or competition. You're the one who's always arm wrestling. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys. So coming up, I've got some alternative holiday shopping ideas for you in this week's Code Red. But first, shopping can be draining. So here's Heather with a little departure for you with her critically acclaimed and especially random producer pick of the week. This week, I've got a crazy fan alert for you from the genre aristocrat. Lord T and Eloise are bewigged 18th century aristocrat rappers from Memphis, Tennessee. Maurice Eloise the 13th, Lord Treadwell, and Mr. E are private school educated white boys 
who came up with this idea while making fun of over-the-top rap music videos with all their ostentatious cars and bling. So they created this parody of the obscenely rich and bored. Think the Beastie Boys with catchy, tongue-in-cheek lyrics. Dressed in Mozart's threads. They truly believe that rap music needs salvation and that this is their true calling. They've come from the past to help save rap music once and for all. I guess everybody needs a purpose. Sponsoring this episode of Techzilla is Netflix. If you like high def, you can get both HD, DVD, and Blu-ray movies and shows. Get a free trial of them by signing up through a site they set up just for us at netflix.com slash techzilla. And now it's time for my pick of the week. It's none other than Code Red. This week, in appreciation for Black Friday, I'm gonna show you some of my favorite places on the web to buy gifts on the cheap. So for all of you who want to buy more mainstream gifts but still want a stellar deal, check out Become.com. It is an innovative search engine that gathers information from over 3 billion web pages where you can shop and compare products, prices, and the best stores for products from electronics, computers, cameras, to name a few. It's a great place to do your research and save money by reading product reviews and researching buying guides. You can even shop and research at the same time by rolling over a product that will show you price and different brand comparisons in one view. And for those of you who are looking for more of that unique special something gift, I've got trunk.org. Now, Trunk is a New York-based independent art and design resource. Designers post their work for about 99 bucks a year and you peruse the site and buy directly from them. So browse items from accessories, art, photography, jewelry. They have a great gift guide and a deals guide if you need to save a little bit of money. And for instance, some of my favorites, I really enjoy the art of Magdalene and, and you can add it to your wish list. You can go to the direct link of where she's selling it. Why I really like this site though is because you can buy directly from the artists which you know it's that shop think globally shop locally even though they're kind of far away but you're still doing a direct you know to uh, artist uh, point of sale which I really appreciate and then the next site that I really enjoy is velocityartanddesign.com it is an innovative art and design website where you can find very unique items that you would rarely stumble upon in the you know the real world so for instance on this site they have a great drop down menu designer and company and Again, it's very similar to trunks.org. Um, it's a little bit more sophisticated. I would say Velocity is a little bit more New York, where Trunk is a little bit more San Francisco. Um, and it's gonna be a little bit pricier. You can get bigger items like beds and benches and stuff. So if you're looking for that bigger purchase, go to Velocity Art and Design. And if you're looking for something more like trinkety and you know accessory, like go to Trunks. So Patrick, I have this strong feeling you're doing something really geeky over here. No, no. It's, it's the return of the revenge of the $500 PC. Totally not geeky. What was I thinking? Okay, the name is geeky. <laughs> but the project, the idea is we're going to put together a bunch of parts, uh -huh. see how much power we can pack into a system for 500 bucks. I don't know what you consider geeky. I consider that geeky. But for all of you who haven't been following Patrick throughout his life like I have, you haven't done this segment in like three years. Why? Uh, well, first of all, the, I'm still using the $500 PC I built back in 2004. you're a very good computer day. maker. Well, it's also, I'm not doing a lot of video editing and I'm not doing any gaming. If it was gaming, it wouldn't be so hot. Uh -huh. But for everything else I do, this system's holding up. And for 500 bucks, I'm thinking that this computer might suck. Oh. Tell me I'm wrong. Oh, contraire. <laughs> oh, actually, it's amazing. The, the Core 2 Duo processors are phenomenal, uh -huh. and they're cheap right now. AMD's Phenom, Intel's Yorkfield, Wolfdale are a ways off, at least at the low end. Uh -huh. The fall processor price cuts have hit. It's a great time to build a machine, and if you have like an older, you know, Pentium 4 or something like that, you're gonna be just scandalized at how much faster this machine's gonna run. You're gonna love it. Okay. It's gonna be amazing. Okay, I'm ready. You even have a modicum I'm of gaming power. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. <laughs> you're like, stop! <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna be building it. I haven't yep. told you that part yet. No. Okay, so. Um, Intel Core 2 Duo E4500, 128 bucks. Okay. If you're feeling kind of crazy, if you're overclocking, Intel Pentium Dual Core E2160 is under $85. They're overclocking to about 2.6, 2.8 gigahertz. Originally, they're up over three. The thing is, though, it's the same core as the, the Intel Core Duo, just has half the cache. So you're basically in the same processor, but mm. a little bit less cache. Okay. So it's going to be a little less fast than some applications, but a lot of stuff like rendering and stuff, it's going to be just as fast. It's cheap. 
it's fast. It's going to be faster than like your notebook. You're going Got to love it. it. Okay. You're excited. <laughs> Memory also cheap. We found two gigabytes of OCZ DDR2 800. And we don't even need 667 megahertz memory should work fine. DDR3, totally unnecessary at this point, 36 bucks after a rebate. Two gigabytes of memory, 36 bucks from a real manufacturer. Just use your rebate. Yes, and search around. I mean, we did a lot of searching on pricewatch.com and newegg.com and, and hit the local computer stores. It's amazing how cheap parts are right now. Motherboard, now I kind of sneaked on this one. Um, it's an older motherboard, it's Asus PN5, excuse me, P5N. I can never get PN5, P5N. You're fired. <laughs> I'm fired. <laughs> SLI, 55 bucks. This is an open box special, so I kind of cheated on this one. But it's a pretty good motherboard, overclocks really well, super stable. Case, this is where we're totally cutting money. If you have an old case like you pulled off the street, ATX case is an ATX case, spend 50 bucks on a power supply. We're going to do a no brand like case with a $35, uh, basically a case and a power supply. We found them locally for 35 bucks. We might even find one cheaper than that. Hard drive, 250 gigabytes, $75 right now. It's a Seagate drive. And shop around, because I found last week, I found two uh, 500 gigabyte drives, uh, 60 megabytes of cash, 7200 RPM, $99.95. And I'm sure, yeah, there's just so many deals going off because of Black Friday. So yeah, definitely yeah. do your shopping and Well, this around. is all even before Black Friday. I know, so that's what weekend, I'm saying. Like, this weekend should be insane. DVD, yeah. DVD burner, 35 bucks. We found light on wow. DVD burners for 28 bucks, like 16X DVD burners. That's you just, it's just no point to do anything else. Graphics makes me want to cry. This is where it gets complicated. Okay. Because graphics vendors... As if it wasn't already complicated for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, we're going to have a list of parts. We're going to have a list of parts on the website. We're going to have some good. articles you can read to kind of figure out why it went this way. But graphics is where if you're not doing 3D gaming and you're, you're not especially excited about all the, the 3D effects in, in Vista, mm -hmm. you really don't need much of a graphics card. A 2400. I chose a 2600 XT with HDMI output because I want to play around with this. Um, for uh, uh, as possibly as a home theater machine. GeForce 8500 GT would cost a lot less, would also be cheap, wouldn't be very good for 3D gaming. If you're doing 3D gaming, you want to spend a lot more here, get as close to an NVIDIA GeForce 8800 or an ATI 2900 as possible. And watch the little suffixes on graphics parts, because like, you know, one will be like an XT, and one will be a Pro, and the performance difference can be pretty dramatic. Okay, I have such a random question for you right now, Fire but like, out. you know how people are recycling a lot of their parts these mm -hmm. days? Is it even worth going down to one of those like recycling centers to kind of search for parts as you're putting something together or is that kind of just it depends on the recycling center yeah. right because a lot of the stuff that you you would have recycled back in the day like your your audio card and maybe because like right now your your networking and your audio are, are almost always integrated on your motherboard mm -hmm. if you want better quality audio then you go for external USB audio or a standalone audio card um, you know for a motherboard or memory you're probably not going to find it there um, for you know a DVD drive, it's twenty eight bucks, right? Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of what I tend to do is is I have friends who are constantly buying a new graphics card every six months because mm -hmm. they have an addiction, they have an issue, they they need the extra three frames on you know Doom Four. Mm -hmm. So I usually buy their cards for nothing. Okay. You know what I mean? Because a lot you of you have things, your own recycle program going yeah. on. Yeah. Well, I gotta say, like you know, the last three systems I've built have all been ATX cases that I basically got off the street or from the local Goodwill. Okay. Because I don't particularly need a fancy case. If you want a fancy case, go for it. But I'm just gonna buy a plain, cheap steel case. I was just thinking about another way to maybe save a couple bucks. I like that thought. Well, okay. can, if you have an existing system, I mean, we do 500 based on that you're recycling your monitor mm -hmm. and you're reusing operating system, mm -hmm. right? Because if you weren't, like a 20 inch flat panel is 200 bucks and your operating system, like XP is going to be like 150 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, or you could do Linux for nothing, but you definitely want to look around because, like, I could I could recycle the case, the power supply because I have a 500 watt power supply in my machine right now. Um, the case, the power supply. I could kind of recycle the DVD drive, but I want a new one, and I upgraded it to a 300 gigabyte hard drive. So those are four components right there. You know what I mean? If, mm -hmm. you're, if you're thinking about this, you don't necessarily have to build a whole new machine. Just take the good parts out of your existing machine and upgrade the rest. Got it. So grand total price on this one, 477 bucks. We might spend a little bit more money on a power supply. Tell us what you think. I'm gonna go shopping. I'm gonna figure out like what the total cost is with the shipping and sales tax, and we'll see what the total ends up being. Can we put it together? Yes, we'll awesome. put it together right here. Right on. Make you put it together right here. Right. Okay, so coming up, your email questions answered. But first, looking for the best prices before you shop, digital cameras, MP3 players, home electronics, all that good stuff. We regularly check Google Product Search, formerly known as Frugal, and shop.pcmag.com before we buy. They both offer a simple interface and a range of prices from various online resellers. Pricewatch.com does the same thing for computer components. It's a great 
great way to make sure you're getting a good deal. Big thanks to GoDaddy for reaching out and sponsoring Techzilla. If you want to make an impact online, view it with GoDaddy.com. .com names as low as $199, plus world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much more. Enter code TECH5, T-E-K-5, when you check out and save an additional $10 off any order of $40 or more. So we did a segment a few weeks ago about low-cost headphones and Some good 20 bucks. Lord, did we get a response back. We got a ridiculous pile of emails. By the time I got them all into one document, it was well over 12, 13, maybe 14 pages. Most often repeated manufacturer, cost. Yeah. They seem to own the whole, I mean, and first of all, let me thank everybody. Tyler, Tracy, Deontay, RJ, Augustin, George, Clint, Dakota, Steve, John, Pat, Matt, Doug, Ian, Prime, Andrew, Dave, Kieran, and Greg, another Doug, and our apologies to that anybody That was like an acceptance missed. speech. Right there, I like felt for like an that. Oscar. Anyway. Anyhow. So which cost models were they pointing out? The Sport Pro, $19 usually. KSC 75, a lot of audio guys love that, 15 bucks, and cost is the plug, their in-ear headphones for a whopping $12. I mean, come on now. So also Sennheiser was mentioned a few times. HD202, HD201, and a little more expensive, usually around 50 bucks, but sometimes on sale for 20, the PX100. And a ridiculous, like a bunch of offerings from Sony in the $20 range. You guys chose at least six different models, <laughs> none of them twice. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean. So yeah. obviously you're grabbing them off the rack at Target. Right. You're happy about them. You sent it in, and we want to thank everybody. All right. So now it's time for some viewer mail. First one reads: I'm working at a government test facility where cell phones with cameras are banned. Uh -oh. What kind of options are out there for a smartphone without a camera, regardless of service provider? From Matthew, somewhere near Washington D.C. Okay, so we're like, that's an odd question. Yeah. Less than two days later, I saw on the last phone that you guys visited a cell phone expert and all the phones had cameras. Unfortunately, I work for a government contractor that does not allow cameras on the property, so no iPhone for me. This is from Billy, who's somewhere in Virginia. So, okay, we went to the best phone reviewer we know, Sasha Seg and PCMag.com, and there were a lot more models than I would have thought. <laughs> me too. Sasha said, right, this is really good stuff. The best non-camera smartphones are the BlackBerry 8800 series, the 8300 from T-Mobile and Singular, or the 8830 from Sprint and Verizon. Solid, business-like, efficient, no cameras. The cheaper, slightly older 87 series, Sasha said, are also still good, also no camera. And Verizon also sells a Palm Trio 700P with no camera. I never would have thought there were that many smartphones. But then when I camera. think about it now, and people are using their Blackberries, you know, like not not the Pearl, but the, the standard Blackberry. Sure. Yeah, no camera. No camera. Who no knew? camera. No camera. There you go. And then usually that's a deal breaker for some, but that's a deal maker for these government officials. And All right. Yeah, don't, yeah, it's just, yeah. <laughs> people who work in secret labs watch us. I know, I know. <laughs> All right, so next question. On the last episode, you mentioned special requirements for playing HD DVDs through a Media Center PC. What would be a good setup if I mm. wanted to build Media Center PC with an HD DVD player to work with my HD TV from Levi? Are you saying you need to pay out? Well, there's going to be payout. There's one part of this that's going to be expensive. Our $500 PC would be an excellent start. Uh -huh. It's pretty simple. If you're not cracking the copy protection on a Blu-ray or an HD DVD disc, you need an HDCP compliant, that's high band with digital content protection, say that three times fast, nope. monitor <laughs> and graphics card. You're going to need a pretty hefty processor, 3 gigahertz or better, Pentium D, Pentium 4, a Core 2 Duo, or on the AMD side, an Athlon or a Turion 64FX. The Focus Cyberlink have a great list of compatible graphics cards. We're going to put that in the show notes. Think G4 7600 or better, or Radeon X1600 or better. Now you're going to need a Blu-ray or an HD DVD drive, which are like a couple hundred to a few hundred dollars each, or one of LG's nifty combo HD DVD Blu-ray drives, which are around 300 bucks. Right. And you're going to need some software to go along with that too. I hope you were all taking notes on that. Show and it will be in the show notes. <laughs> All right, so is that is that a show? We're done. We're done. Well, actually, one last thing. Don't forget to email us with your questions. Techzilla at revision3.com. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Jessica Corbin. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>